Hey everyone, this is Dan. I'll be talking about two pharmaceutical companies that have been doing very well because of the weight loss drugs they have been selling. The two companies are Eli Lilly, stock symbol LLY, and Novo Nordisk, stock symbol NVO. As you can see on this chart, LLY went up 102% in the last year, and NVO went up 82% in the last year, when Triple Q went up only 35%, and SPY was up only 26%. We'll see why these two companies are doing so well, and whether their stock prices will continue to go up. If you like what you see here, please click the like, subscribe, and notification buttons so that you'll be notified when I post new videos in the future. Thank you. Let's continue. We have a lot of interesting stuff to cover. Eli Lilly has been selling the weight loss drug Zepbound, which costs $1,060 a month, which is not cheap. On average, an adult loses 20.9% of their weight after taking this drug. Novo Nordisk has been selling the weight loss drug Wegovi, which costs $1,349 a month. On average, an adult loses 15% weight after taking this drug. According to UC Health Today and many other news reports, there has been a shortage of these weight loss drugs. These weight loss drugs are originally developed to treat diabetes. The FDA has also approved the drugs for treating obesity. Currently, diabetic patients are given priority access to the drugs because of the shortage. This Fortune magazine article said that the weight loss drug market will grow from $6.15 billion in 2023 to $37.94 billion in 2032. Because of the supply shortage, both LLY and MVO have been investing billions of dollars to increase their production capacities. The added production volumes will come online between 2025 to 2029. Other pharmaceutical companies are also developing similar weight loss drugs. For example, Pfizer has a weight loss drug in development, which is in phase 2B of the FDA approval process. For a drug to go from phase 2B to full FDA approval, it typically takes about two to three years. All these drugs in development are in phase one or phase two. That means for the next couple of years, there will not be new competition for the drugs from LLY and NVO. A potential piece of bad news is that Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders recently said that the, price, the prices of weight loss drugs are unreasonably high at more than $1,000 a month. It is therefore possible that the U.S. government will put pressure on LLY and MVO to reduce their prices, similar to what the government has done to companies selling insulin. According to this article by Pharmaceutical Technology, the price of the weight loss drugs sold by LLV and MVO are 10 times more expensive in the U.S. than when they are sold in most European countries. This study shows that since 2020, after the Biden administration pledged to reduce the price of insulin, the actual price of insulin has been reduced by only 10.6%. That means we're probably not going to see very dramatic price reduction of the weight loss drugs from LLV or MVO anytime soon. This is a list of the top drugs sold by LLY. Mount Gero and Zepbound are the two new drugs for diabetes and weight loss. They are of the same chemical composition. Their patent expiration will be in 2036, which is 12 years from today. Their 2023 sales were less than $6 billion, compared to the estimate of $37 billion, which is the potential total weight loss market. There is certainly quite a lot of room to grow in the future. This is a list of the top drugs sold by Novo Nordisk, Ozempic, and Wigovi are the two new drugs for diabetes and weight loss. They are of the same chemical composition. Their patent expiration will be in 2031 and 2032, which is more than seven years from now. Their 2023 sales were about $18 billion, again, compared to the estimate of $37 billion of potential total weight loss market, there is certainly quite a lot of room to grow. This chart shows the quarterly EPS of Eli Lilly. We don't see a lot of recent growth. That's because their weight loss drug Zapbound got FDA approval only in November of 2023. 
we should be seeing their EPS growing quickly from now on as they increase the sales of ZBAP. The quarterly EPS of Novo Nordisk has been growing a lot since late 2022. That's because the weight loss drug Wigovi was approved by FDA in June of 2021, earlier than ZBAP from Eli Lilly. Let's look at the valuation of Eli Lilly. First, I looked at the P.E. ratios of the leading pharmaceutical companies. Eli Lilly's trailing P.E. is 128, which is higher than most other companies' numbers. I then use a year-end 2023 stock price and net income as my base and use the assumption of 40% annual EPS growth and P.E. ratios of 100 for 2023, 80 for 2025 to calculate the stock prices for year-end 2024 and year-end 2025. For 2024, I got $951 a share, and for 2025, I got $1,065 a share. For the valuation of Novo Nordisk, I used the assumptions of 15% EPS growth per year and P ratio of 40. For 2024, I got a stock price of $164 a share, and for 2025, $189 a share. The professional analysts rate both LLY and MVO as a buy or strong buy, with high target prices at around $1,040 for LLY and $170 for MVO. With regard to insider trading, there has been quite a bit of insider selling for LLY in the last 2-3 months. That means the stock price might flatten out in the near future, but I'm still bullish about a company for the long term. Unfortunately, I cannot find similar insider trading information for MVO. Maybe that's because MVO is a company based in Denmark, with only American depository receipt registered in the New York Stock Exchange. MVO is probably not required to file SEC Form 4, which is about insider trading. Let's look at how LLY and MVO performed when the broad market was down. I compared the two stocks against SPY and Triple Q for the following five periods. The 2008 financial crisis, the 2015 market crash, the 2022 Fed rate hike, which induced a market correction, the recent 2023 market correction, and the pandemic crash. For example, during the 2022 Fed rate hike period, SPY went down 25%, Triple Q went down 33%, LLY went up 19%, and MVO went down only 8%. Overall, both LLY and MVO performed better than the broad market during market downturns. LLY and MVO certainly performed much better than the broad market in the last 5 years and in the last 12 months. Let's look at technical analysis. This is a daily chart for LLY for the last 6 months. As you can see, it has been going up steadily in the last 3 months. It's approaching the upper Bollinger Band now. The RSI value is high but still lower than the historical max. The weekly chart for LLY shows that it's right at the upper Bollinger Band and the RSI value is pretty high. That means it might stop going up in the next few days or might even start to go down a little bit. For MVO, it went down for a few days recently and has been rebounding. If it can get above and stay above the 20-day moving average, that'll be a pretty bullish sign. The RSI value is not too high now. The weekly chart for MVO shows that the stock is not under technical pressure to go down because it has not reached the upper Bollinger Band and the RSI value is also not very high. So what are my conclusions? The weight loss drugs by LLY and MVO have significant growth potentials. Demand far exceeds supply for now, and their patent expiration dates are more than six years from today. LLY and MVO have grown faster and SPY and Triple Q in the 12-month and 5-year periods. They are fairly recession-resistant. Both stocks have favorable analysts' ratings. The daily RSI values are high for LLY and moderate for MVO. I will consider buying shares when daily RSI is less than 60. We should be mindful of the risk related to U.S. government putting pressure on LLY and MVO to reduce price. I have bought and sold MVO since 2022 and have made significant profits. I recently bought LLY shares. I will post my trades in the community section of my YouTube channel. I used to share my trades with my subscribers on Twitter. 
Starting about three months ago, I've been posting my trades in the community section of my YouTube channel. As you can see, I tweeted that I bought MVO on November 14, 2022. I sold MVO shares on May 4, April 4, and January 11 of 2023 at 39%, 18%, and 15% gains. A month ago on June 3rd, I posted on YouTube that I bought LLY shares. And yesterday I posted that I sold my MVO shares at a very small loss and bought more LLY shares. My LLY shares bought in June are at 11.5% gain already. Again, if you like what you see here, please click the like, subscribe, and notification buttons so that you will be notified when I post new videos or post new messages on YouTube in the future. As usual, I welcome your comments, questions, and suggestions. I'd like to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor. I share my stock trading strategies and analyses for educational and entertainment purposes only. If you want to buy or sell stocks, you should make your own decisions and you should definitely consult with your financial advisors before you do so. This wraps up my video for now. I will chat with you again in the next few days. In the meanwhile, I'd like to wish you the very best of luck with your financial investments.